Yeah, All right. champion, Otis Griffin, everybody. Today is a dedication to my man, uh, Nazem Richardson. You know, I just had to get you up here, man. It's good to see you again, once again. But it's it's, it's been crazy since the last time we got on this thing. Absolutely insane. What's been going on with you, man? And and tell me about something something that you feel, experience, seen, witness with my man Nazem, because you know he was boy. We lost one this time, for real. Oh, oh yeah. Well, you know, with the whole thing, uh, you know, uh, Brother Nas, uh, we lost him. And then uh, before that, we lost uh, 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 some great fighters. And then before that, we lost Luke Duva. It's just like yeah. um, uh, just like uh, USS was talking about. Um, it's got to be a torch pass, you know what I'm saying? Yourself, me, uh, USS, you know, uh, it's, it's got to be uh, – uh, our duty to pay homage to these guys and go on and teach boxing the right way. You know, um, yeah. there's a lot of new trainers out that, that don't have the techniques that we have uh, uh, yeah. uh, been uh, uh, around in, and experience, uh, in, in our careers. And if we don't pass yeah. them on, it's going to die. And then, you know, with that, then a, a piece of boxing dies. But these guys live on within us. Um, but I've I, I known uh, uh, him. Uh, uh, in a in a competitive nature, uh, since about uh, uh 2004. Of course, I knew him uh, before that by watching him on TV. But uh, his sons uh, uh were signed to Golden Boy, and uh, I was one of the first fighters on the Golden Boy uh, moniker. Yeah. Um, with that, we ended up being in the same um uh, arenas a lot of times. I, mean, I think the first time I met him was at the Desert Diamond Casino. Uh, me and Rock uh, were the uh. uh the main events, uh, the main event and co-main events of, of the car. Uh, yeah. And um, from there, what he used to do is, uh, you know, he, he knows a lot of people, of course, and a lot of East Coast people. If, if there was an East Coast guy that was coming to fight uh, at these uh, neutral sites like the Desert Diamond yeah. Casino or out in Vegas or, you know, uh, you know, up in Seattle or, or somewhere, yeah. uh, um, then he would, um, he would uh, corner him. And so a lot of times he would <laughs> he would get in the corner with these guys or whatever. And then um uh uh you know um my my trainer and, and it is crazy because very similar to you to to Steve, um, you know, being uh being Christian, I know he's a, a Hebrew uh, uh now, but uh you know, uh, under the under uh, somewhat the same faith. Um yeah. we would uh uh Surround ourselves with a lot of brothers uh, from from uh, uh, that are Muslim. You know, our trainers, yeah. uh, <laughs> the people that yeah. roll and everything. And one thing yeah. that I noticed, uh, so so it's funny because my trainer, Safadim Mateen, or even uh, Nasir Navaroni or whatever, go pray with with Nas, right? Yeah. Before the fight, <laughs> <laughs> come, Figure that one come. Out. <laughs> To my corner, and then I'm looking across, and, and it was, used to be the same thing with uh, with Eddie Mustafa Muhammad. Also, they oh, and I'm like, yo, like it's just weird to see guys <laughs> interact, right? And then be against each other. So then it became like a competition thing, and it became a, a mutual respect thing as far yeah. as uh, different yeah. faiths and everything. But uh, above all, all those guys really showed me uh, what it meant to be a, a, a complete man. And uh, be yeah. a father to your to your children, and yeah. and, and everything of, of that nature, man. Um, Absolutely, uh, truly a great spirit. I, I t that's the that's the main thing I keep saying when people ask me about him. Truly, just a great spirit. Just like uh, you guys were talking about earlier, when he comes in a room, you can feel it without him saying a word. You know what I'm saying? And those yeah. are, are truly special people because um, a couple times, you know, like I. I when he finally got me, he finally got me was um, uh, the Yusuf Mack fight. Me and Yusuf Mack were fighting an IBF eliminator. Oh, yeah, and, and, yeah. I yeah. remember you. And, and, and <laughs> That's so a whole looking now. over. Yeah, it's funny. So I'm looking <laughs> over. So I don't even know Nas, Nas is in the building, right? So I'm looking yeah. over, and I see Yusuf's usual people, you know, Philly guys. You got Percy over there and everything. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. And then um, we get ready to go into the ring for the announcements. Like, you know, I'm taking off my yeah. shirt. I turn around and I, I'm like, Nazim, what, like, what you doing? <laughs> and I kid you not, man, 
those kind of things matter, man, because that fight right there was a split decision win by Yusuf. And, and me and Yusuf got a lot of history because we trained together under John Tandy and everything. Oh, yeah. But, um, okay. But uh, oh. uh, by, by Nas being in his, in his corner like that, man, he it, there was a uh, – I think it was the – Knife round, it was a twelve round fight. Knife round, about a knife or tenth round. Used to have got me with a with a balance shot, and I know, I know, I know, I know that he uh, that that uh uh Miss uh, Brother Richardson told him to throw that man. It was yeah. it's like a, a sweeping hook that these the Philly fighters throw, and uh yeah. he was like, and matter of fact, he was like, he's like, he's like, he's like, um, uh, Matt, uh, uh, Chatter, they call him Chatter, Chat, um. Throw Stevie, throw Stevie, because you know yeah. they have been training. With, they have been training with with with, with Cunningham, and then I'm like, throw Stevie. He kept saying that over and over. And finally, the per- perfect uh, uh, um, opportunity came, and he and he and he barely clipped me on the side of. Uh, I, yeah. I blocked the shot, but the weight of it because I was off balance. Yeah. And, yeah. and how he rolled into it, I went down to a knee, and I just looked over at that. I remember listen, literally looking over at that. And and shaking my head like <laughs> you got <Right>? it. <laughs> and then I got up because I knew the fight was that close that that one yeah. point was gonna cost the fight, and I couldn't oh, get yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? Unless I was, you know, gonna knock him down or whatever. And yeah. and so so that was some of the moments or whatever. But it's just moments like that. And then even to the point where when I became a a, a trainer and I would go to all these uh, these Golden Boy events all over, you know, from. Utah mm-hmm. to to all over the world, even over in, in Germany and stuff. And uh, yeah. he would jump in the corner with an East Coast fighter, and I would jump in the corner with the West Coast the West undercard Coast. guy. <laughs> like, yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, we gotta represent where you're from, you know. Yeah, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Right, it's only so, right. It's so always good memories, good. but but just learning, learning from guys like that, almost through yeah. like osmosis. You know what I'm saying? Just like you know, uh, even from the point where uh, how serious. Uh, it was when he uh, was in Shane Moses' corner and he and he checked Margarita's hands, you know. Woo! Uh, ever boy, since I'm then, in boxing history. Yeah, yeah, ever since then, man, you know, because before then, catch used to be like, oh, it ain't a world title fight, so why you in here looking at the hand wraps? Like, no, nah, I need to see the man wraps, man. You yeah. know, like, like, I need to see everything. I need to, you know, this, this kid's life is in my hands, you know. Yeah, so, absolutely. And with that being said, one of my guys, Rashad, had been sparring with Margarita in training camp. So the whispers had already been like, this dude is hitting hard. He cracked his orbital bone. And mm-hmm. it it came out after Nazim found, caught him. And then it was like, oh, and they even got him on 24-7 saying it like, yeah, man, he caught me. And I knew, and I don't know my boy, he could take a punch. And I know mm-hmm. he won't know, you know, he won't know halfway. I mean, mm-hmm. when I, I said, that just don't make no sense. And he said, yo, that dude was wearing plastic. I said, training camp? (laughs) You know, they was lacing them up, man. And, you know, guys always want to show you that they can do something a little bit better than other coaches. And they got you these little secrets. But, man, there's a line. You know what I'm saying? There's a line in this game. That that derailed Rashad. Rashad, Me and you both know Rashad would have been a world champion, definitely. You know, oh my gosh! No, and that doubt, derailed man. that that totally derailed his career right there. You know, yeah, and 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 you can you can utter these words. We had a six figure sponsor coming to see and sign on with him after he lost his sponsors due to it. I mean, he could really sue him, and he just couldn't put that thing. It was just interfering with him. Plus, he was fighting against the Sapo, but he couldn't turn it on. So that kind of that deal came off the table. And I said, you know, if it's meant to be, you'll get back. You know, that's the thing. And and he he took it really hard. He really wanted to do it because he knew he could do it. And mm-hmm. uh, but when that happens to you, because he officially really got one in camp, it didn't affect him. But when he got that one, it changed things a little bit more. And I always tell people who Rashad was in the ring. You know, you, you, you'll be hard pressed to find someone how, as skilled as that dude mm-hmm. and able to do what he could do in that ring. It very few guys at, at in this era right now don't have that kind of skill set. Mm-hmm. I don't seen him in every kind of situation. And I'm going to tell you, he brings that smoke and the level of skill set that he possessed in that ring, man. 
it's hard to teach guys like that to get guys up to that status. You yeah. know, so you know, you're 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 sp you're speaking right, man. But thank God that Nassim Sim did that because that changed the scope of boxing, how people view it, and like the way the commissioners and the people backs it. Now, now it's like people serious about it, and that was from that one night. Because if that wouldn't have never happened, who knows what would have happened to Shane Mosley that night? Yeah, Shane, yeah. Shane was on though. I mean, but but who knows? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Thing was just, that was just a perfect style match. I mean, he just couldn't do anything wrong. I mean, he won every round. I mean, he was he was sitting on on everything. He was like punishing them for for trying to cheat. I was like, yeah, yeah. yeah. And and I and I'm willing to bet that 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 is exactly what happened. Like, imagine how serious because the way you would take that as a fighter is like, man, this guy's trying to. He just tried to kill me. He might as well have a, a little 22 in his hand. You know what I'm saying? Like, like that's, that's, I'm about to put it on him. He, he really tried to yeah. just, you know, take yeah. my life or, or hurt me, you know? So, yeah, he put, he put that, he brought that smoke. I mean, that was one of the most um, beautiful fights at that weight class in a very, very long. I mean, that was one of the last of its kind, the way he punished a killer. You know, he went and yeah. punished them. I mean, it was like Margarita knew straight out of the gate. After the first round, it was like, he was like, oh, man. This, <laughs> yeah. this something ain't something ain't, He ain't acting like Cotto acted. Like, yeah. This dude bringing that smoke like I ain't nobody. And, yeah. yeah, it just shows you, man, in the sport of boxing styles, make fights. And when Nassim was in the corner with uh, Shane, when he fought Mayweather, you know, I know that it takes, I tell people, being a gym trainer is one thing. Going to the corner and talking and making adjustments when it's really, really, really happening is a different thing. You know it. Yeah. You yeah have, because the, the that was one of the few times in boxing that I've ever seen a man say it the perfect way and the perfect thing, and the fighter couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. You know, especially with someone like Shane, it just, you know, hats off to Mayweather. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that just yeah. Showed, showed you the level that he was. But Nassim, I was like, man, he's telling him, you know, he's like, it was just beautiful instruction, the sound bites, you know, just the, the corner cachet. And by the eighth round, he was just like, <laughs> Come on, man. You, you want to know what was was really eerie about that whole uh, fight situation? If you go back to uh, what was the HBO thing called? Uh, uh, not oh, not, I mean, twenty four seven. Twenty four seven. So if you yeah. go back to twenty four seven, this is like weeks before the fight, almost like a month out. Like, yeah. And, uh, uh, I watched Richardson them all. says, "Yeah, he says, um, he says they said, well, what do you think is going to happen?" And uh, he says, "Well." The way I see the fight is like this. He goes, uh, Floyd's going to come out, and he's going to measure uh, Shane. Shane's going to get on him. He's going to, you know, he's going to bring it to him. He goes, and Mayweather's going to have to gut check himself. And he goes, and then he's going to turn into a monster. A monster. He goes, and from that point, whatever Shane does, he goes, that's what's going to tell who wins the fight. And I'll be damned if that did not happen. Like yeah. remember, like man, he hit he hit uh, uh Mayweather with an overhand right, man. I still it's almost head. like um like Mayweather was one of those um those puppets that's held up by strings. Like yeah, I'm like, what is holding him up? Bobblehead doll. I mean, he almost <laughs> broke his neck. I think he could have yeah. killed a cow with that punch. Yeah, I think he could have he could have killed a small cow. I've never seen Mayweather. <laughs> I've never seen anyone take a shot that hard and stay up. Yeah. Yeah. You think about it. Think about the hardest punches you've ever seen land clean. Mm -hmm. And then he took three more. The body shot nearly broke Mayweather in half after mm -hmm. with that right hook to the body. Yeah. Yeah. And Shane hey. can punch. Shane is a yeah. very heavy handed guy. Yeah. So he was what we call he was pushing all his chips to the table when that, that, that punch landed. Yeah. Because I just don't think he felt comfortable in the ring with Mayweather. I just feel like Mayweather had this thing 
in um, Shane's mind. I just think that he has signed them during the during the buildup of the promotion. It kind of took a little bit away from a steam away from Shane, even though he tried he tried to kind of stay there. But Mayweather, man, I mean, when you get in there, you in there against more than just physical attributes. You in there against yeah. a really really high boxing IQ, and he has three professors. Professors are people who've been in the sport, experienced the sport, have been and done it at the highest of levels, and then they wrote the book and was able to pass it down. He had three of those. So, you know, not to mention being able to be shared a ring with Sweet Pea and Frankie mm -hmm. Randall when he mm -hmm. came over here to Virginia. Mm -hmm. People like that, he was fighting and in the ring, getting work at 16 years old. That transfers. This is what yeah. I... This is what I try to explain to fighters. A guy reached out through Messenger yesterday. It stands out because it was absolutely ludicrous. He said, "What does it take to? What I got to do to to be a um, to to get win the WBC belt?" So I go down this list. I said, first, you got to establish an amateur career. You got to have a, a, a and you have to compete in the regionals, nationals, and making it to the Olympics won't hurt you. And that's how you do your first run. So mm -hmm. you have to be established and then you have to get sponsors and then you have to be recognized by fighting fighters when you get to the pros that are elite and they're on the come up. And you got to knock somebody off who they had coming up in that ring. You got to fight formidable guys. And then I said, and that can get you in the mention because I just had uh, Mauricio Suleiman on last week on the show asking him the same thing how do they get the people in the top 25 what is that process and what does it look like so the boxing fans could see then i told him now how many fights have you had he said none and i was just like see this is what you guys think you think because you, <laughs> you think because you is the screen is this far from your face that the belt is that far from your face yeah. Like, are you serious, man? This is a, a real, you on play boxing. And, 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 and that's why I do these shows, man. I take time. It takes a lot to do this stuff. But Well, people don't, just don't understand the, the, the simple science behind. It's, it's like this. You know, um, I, I came into boxing at, at age uh, 22, right, yeah. uh, uh, after the NFL. And, um, and when I came in, I wanted to be a champion, right? I would tell myself that in, in the morning or whatever, but yeah. I never mentioned it to nobody else. Like I went two yeah. years just coming every day. You got to show up every day. That's what a lot of people don't understand. And every um, it, um, uh, an old uh, a football coach of mine said, hey, um, a, a kid uh, came in and said to me after practice and said, coach, um, how do I get better? He said, hey, you got to show up every day. Yeah. And that's it. That's, that's that's as simple as it. Because if you come every day, you know something's gonna happen. So a, a new experience, something yes, to add on. Fine. Somebody like Mayweather, like he was around those guys every day all the time before he all even picked up gloves. Yeah, every day he he saw what his his uncle did when he when when he was eating or when he was a, a, out of the ring, you know, or when it was yeah. downtime from the and then. Then he saw what his dad did, and then he took, cause th cause they did a lot of bad stuff too. So he took the good yeah. stuff that they did and kept it. And then he said, "Oh, you know, you know what? All stuff. that bad stuff. I don't, I don't want that around me. So I'm gonna move to Las Vegas." You know? Yeah, that was so, smart. Yeah, because yeah. you got to get some work with one one of Coach Reed's guys, which is Paul Spatafora, when he was an amateur, and he realized that I got to get my conditioning up because. Mm -hmm. There was uh, a lot of speculation around, you know, when he got in that ring, he realized that this levels, you got to keep that intensity level up that entire time. So that was one of his experiences. And of course, sometimes you get in the ring, you don't put in some work and you got to fight somebody else who got all the cabbage <laughs> and you got to kind of figure it out. But that's what boxing is. You got to fight exhausted. So that's one of the things that I took away from the Mayweather fight when Nassim was in his corner that he could tell, you could tell a guy everything right in which Nassim was great at doing. He was great in, in that corner. He was great in that corner and I, and I respect him so much because I was going to bring him on the show. And I didn't know, Steve just made it clear to me that he was even the Oz Pillar then. I didn't so, know that either. 
Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, you never know what somebody's going through. I never. always look. I always look to listen to some things that he says because he grew up where my, my uncle grew up in Philly, you know. So all those brothers, man, it's levels to this game, man. And when you're around that kind of that kind of boxing cachet, you got Matthew Saad Muhammad. Then over in Jersey, you got the Camden Buzz. So you got some of the nastiest guys that are ever laced them up on a block yeah. almost radius. Like, man, yeah. you got to get up. So the level when you walk into the gym is different. And that's why Philly really has that reputation. Same thing out in L.A., same thing, man. You got to belly up. Yeah. Houston, you know, I remember when the baby bull was out there in Houston. We went out. Look, that boy, when you walk into that gym, if you thinking about boxing, you might want to rethink it. Because if that's <laughs> going to be your first real experience, you better look. Like the boys say, hey, if you ever come back, you better check in. Cause you don't belong yeah. here. Yeah. Don't don't just you know what's up. crazy is 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 being in boxing cities like like that like uh like L A yeah. uh, Houston Philly New York yeah. um, Detroit you could get intimidated out of even being a boxer like you might have had some talent and and yeah. go to go in the gym but you see yeah. all the rest of these killers you like. Man, I'm going to go get a job. <laughs> <laughs> you might better get a job. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Look, I done seen it. I done seen it because you don't think. And then sometimes we have a controlled environment. But then it's like, okay, now I know you know what you're doing. You ain't going to waste my fighter's time. Let's work. Mm -hmm. And when we say let's work, we're not talking about let's go to work. I mean, you better have a pack of lunch because you're about to yeah. get pushed into places that you ain't think you ever be able to go. And ain't nothing in your life that you've ever experienced mimics that. So you ain't got the muscle memory for it. You know what I'm saying? So you see that you see that deer in the head, like, look, you know, I have to just I have to check them. I just say, look, it ain't for everybody. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. you gotta go on soul, you gotta go on and soul search. And sometimes you see that that mob realize it ain't what I thought it was, like these guys watching, you know, it ain't what you think it is. I can promise you that. Yeah, uh, it ain't it ain't easy. Uh, hey, no. if it was easy, everybody would have one of them little shiny everybody, belts. It would be nine thousand belts, <laughs> nine thousand champions. It almost is, but that's why you know people like yourself who who was at a you you was at the beginning of the reality show world with the thing and the training. It showed people how hard you had to work because one of the things they captured they captured some good stuff with the the marketing of showing you guys do the work. And it was like, man, so guys got to look in, you know, I would, you know, I'd go from the gym, I'd have it saved and I'd look at it and I'd be like, man, cats, and you were the only one that had a different kind of look. You had the gladiator whole thing. You always stood out on that show. And uh, then you transitioned and went from there. You catapulted into the real game on a whole nother level. And then you, you, you know, you made it the world championship status. So. I tell people what you gotta have to do that. <laughs> Look, my man Brandon the Cannon, who fought on the uh, contender on, on Epic's network. Yeah. Before he fought, I said, you know, good. Look, best of luck. I said you need to study some Archie more, and uh, you need to get because you're gonna have to learn how to. You're gonna have to learn different languages in the ring, like that attribute thing. When you're fighting that level guy, you fighting. It's not going to be the same. You're fighting the Shane Mosley Juniors and these other guys, you know, and Shane Mosley Jr. got a pedigree, you mm -hmm. know, like any, it, at any given time that stuff can come out. So you don't know who's going to be in the ring. You don't know if it's going to be Shane Sr. <laughs> or Shane Jr. Because he got a yeah. pedigree going, waking up in the morning and you got world champions over there hanging out. Oscar De La Hoya. I mean, that rubs off on a kid. Yeah. So I say, know that pedigree so you know that's all for you for for you 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 you're one of the groundbreaking barriers and I mentioned those kind of notes that I keep in my in my notebook as that's going into uh, a literature for like a great novel of how the process of boxing and people that will be noted in our generations for doing historical because you catapult it into the game and where people are now, it started back then with you. You guys were the first to do it, you know, like that, like to be seen and, you know, they people are getting connected to you and stuff. So, you know, like I said, hats off for that, man.
but this was a great this was great to do i miss connecting with you and uh you know i stay current with you and like i told steve man i, I know your businesses how's it going out there right now what's going on with now the nfl's getting ready to is that you know your moving van getting it popping i mean how y'all gonna yeah know, well, uh i'm thinking you know you gotta everything that has to be retweaked and everything so it'll be less yeah. passengers you know on the on the on the yeah. buses and it'll probably be more like private party like maybe like okay. a family or some friends rented out you know what i'm saying instead yeah. of having a a mix of intermingling people. Yeah, I'm thinking yeah. that you know you just you just rent a party uh, okay. and, you, and you ride out like that. You know. Well, I tell you what you do. You know, you do. Uh, you know, you do us the privilege to let us know up here on the show, so people can know how to go about it and what you are doing, so they can connect with you because people like sports, and if you can do that, you know that's a big deal, man. Uh, people, that's something that I feel like. Man, this pandemic hit. I mean, I just seen that thing just taking off when we talked the first time. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Let us know. Let's see it up here. And we're gonna talk specifically on what you got going on, and that'll be like on on my Eric A. Bradley live. So we'll have the audience, and that'll help you know bring awareness to what it is. And um, that's what we want to do for you, man, because you're such a you're such a uh, like minded brother, and I love what you're doing out west, man. You're you're really showing the world, these guys were coming up, how to reinvent yourself. Just don't forget, that's what we see when, when I see you. You reinvented your world and that's given athletes ideas. So continue to keep doing what you're doing, man. I really mean that. Oh yeah, man, shit, I got a lot of more living to do. So I'm gonna keep, cho I'm gonna keep yeah. chopping. Keep chopping yeah, this you're shit. Doing <laughs> yeah, you're doing a good job, man. I'm so proud of you, man. We looked over your stuff and I was just like, we gonna come in and, and give them some advice on some things, you know, just give you talk some some nuggets and share our audience with you because we got a lot of I mean people everywhere. So it's gonna be amazing and just kind of give them insight. Cause it's that's kind of what we're doing right now too, just showing how businesses are are operating now. That's kind of what we'll do. We'll just kind of do that, man. So that's all I got, brother. I'm just so glad to have you and 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 we're gonna chop this up again. Be oh, yeah, checking yeah. that not text you. Make sure I got your email address too, Otis, so I all can right. touch base with you. All right. All right. God bless, Eric. My man. God right. bless, brother. I'll talk to you soon, man. Talk. We out. Yep. See, there you go. Guys who are doing things in an amazing way. And once again, we thank you for tuning in to the fight show. And it's just a very, very tricky time, but we're pulling together, together and galvanizing everyone, making sure that the, the businesses in, 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 the, in the game around the world globally have the understanding of how to transition yourselves from this terrible time that really is giving you opportunity. That's one of the reasons the Jab Juice brand is going on to help people like that. So take the time. Visit them, jabjuice.com. So I'm affiliated. We got a great team of people and just giving you insight. And just sometimes you might just need some, some consultation. Just do that. Let's take a look at your business and then take this so you can take it to the next level. If you're looking to get into that sport of boxing, surround yourself with really good people. Stay tuned next week as we will get it popping once again. We, 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 we look to the heavens above and say, rest in peace. To our man, Nassim Richardson, one of the greatest to ever do it. Until next time, be blessed at God's speed. Eric A. Bradley live, signing out on the Fight Show. Peace.